and welcome to Investment Trends. This program is brought to you with the compliments of the Zambia Development Agency, ZDA, and of course, ZNBC. Now, diversification is a story that the government of Zambia has been talking about, making sure that we move away from one um, industry, such as mining, to something else. It could be manufacturing, it could be tourism. But in this case, we're talking about agriculture. How do we all move to agriculture and ensure that this industry puts in as much as the mining industry has contributed over the years? Now, in so doing, we have players in the agriculture industry that are making equipment tools that we need as farmers to get started. And in that vein, today I am speaking to the managing director of Saro Agro Industry Limited, Mr. Ashok Oza. He's gracing our show today. Hello, welcome to the program. Hello, Tilufia. It's good to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. All right, so there could be somebody out there who's thinking, okay, Saro Agro, it sounds agricultural. What are you about? Who is Saro Agro? The full name of the company is Saro Agro Industrial Limited. Okay. So that our emphasis is on agro equipment, but it, we also encompass industrial equipment. Saro is a multifaceted supplier and manufacturer of machines. Our product range includes now, the product range is quite wide, so I have to look down at it as well. No problem. Tractors, trailers, and agricultural equipment. Agro-processing equipment, such as hammer mills. Pumps for irrigation and for municipal use. Irrigation equipment. Power generators. You know the story we have had of electricity mm -hmm. shortages in the past. Solar equipment which is the wave of the future. And a very mundane product, motorcycles. Mm -hmm. We are equipped with a large, well-equipped metal fabrication and machining workshop and welding facility. In the workshops, we assemble and repair agricultural equipment that we distribute. We provide technical and space service for the products that we distribute and we manufacture, this is important, and we manufacture equipment such as trailers, water bowsers, fuel tanks, hammer mills, agricultural and crop processing machines, etc. I say it's important because ours is a mix of both supplying equipment mm. as well as manufacturing some of the equipment. We can't manufacture all the equipment that we make. But you mentioned in your introduction diversification. So we diversify, or rather we extend the economy by being involved in agriculture, supporting ag agriculture, as well as by providing employment through manufacturing. Right. We have branches in Lusaka, Livingston, Chipata, Mkushi, Kitwe, and Mpongwe. Mm. And we have dealers in various parts of the country. Your question might be, how is Saro doing? Mm. Though we have a wide product base, our major focus is on agricultural equipment. Our sales of agricultural equipment depends on how the farmer is doing. The last three years have been difficult for the farming community due to, on the one hand, drought, not within their control, mm. and on the other hand, due to low commodity prices. Low commodity prices for major crops like maize. As a result, the farmers have not been able to spend mm. as much on equipment as we would like them to do. Okay. However, there are large new investments taking place in agriculture. Investments that are being planned and are being undertaken. We have prospects of sugar and cassava plantations, particularly in, the, in Luapula province and in Western province. 
Government is investing in a big way in the Kajinot project in the Western Province. And government is investing heavily in irrigation facilities throughout the country. These investments will eventually impact on our sector favorably. Right. That's Back wonderful. So um, now you've mentioned that uh, you know you are part of that diverse diversification that the government is talking about. In your own you know terms, in 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 in, in your own words. What would you say are the opportunities that lie in this area for the farmer? Um, and even for you, um, when you talk about the different equipment that you're making, uh, you have farmers growing uh, cashew nut. What is it that I need for me to have an end product that is saleable, that is marketable on the market? Now that is our task. Mm -hmm. We have to identify equipment that is suitable for that particular crop that is being grown, mm -hmm. for all the way from planting to harvesting to processing. Mm -hmm. We try and cover the entire value chain. Once we identify that equipment, we have to have that equipment available in the right place, at the right time, at the right price. Mm -hmm. And we have to be able to support that equipment. And by support, I mean train the users on how to use that equipment, provide spare parts, and repair facilities for them. In so far as identifying the crops are concerned, we cannot assist in that. But once the crops have been identified, we can assist in identifying suitable equipment. Okay. The government, for obvious reasons, focuses its efforts on the small scale and emerging farmers. Mm -hmm. And government's aim is to scale up the small scale and the emerging farmers to the next step. The small scale farmers to the emerging sector, the emerging farmers to the commercial sector. And that means mechanization. Mm -hmm. Mechanization at a small scale level can mean moving from a hoe to a two-wheel tractor and all the accessories that go with it. Mechanization for the emerging farmer means scaling up his tractor horsepower. He may be using a small tractor, 45, 60 horsepower tractor. He will now move up on the size of the tractor he can use or ca uses because he has more land mm -hmm. to cultivate. Government's emphasis is on scaling up the, uh, the farming community. The commercial farmers are generally, generally able to look after themselves because they have access to financing through banks, right. which the uh, small scale and commercial farmers may not always yeah. have. That is what is happening in the agricultural sector right now. Okay. Right. Let, let's talk about how we can make Zambia a food basket, a hub um, in the region and uh, in looking at uh, the equipment also that you're able to provide to help the commercial farmers reach that potential. Right. Zambia is in a fortunate position in that it is correctly located. It is surrounded by countries mm -hmm. which provide a potential market for our agricultural produce. Zambia has the right climate, soils and waters. We have neighboring countries like DRC, where the Katanga province, what used to be Katanga province of DRC, has a population equivalent to that of entire Zambia. And the agriculture is still in its infancy. So that, that is a potential market for Zambia. Mm. That is a market which in the past has been filled by Zimbabwe and South Africa until the Zimbabwe agriculture went down, South Africa and other players started filling up that market, and Zambia filled it up to a certain extent. But now when you look at the potential, if commercial farmers were able to grow maize and export it unfettered into the DRC, there would be an explosion of growth. 
there would be an explosion of growth in the, in the crop, in growing maize. Because the farmers know that there's a ready market for it. And the price there is good. Mm. And Zambia is a country that is closest to DRC. And the commercial farmers have the wherewithal to produce the maize productively in huge quantities. Okay. In doing that, they would pull along the small scale and emerging farming sectors up the value chain because there's a market for the products. Right. They would start improving their productivity because there's a market for the products and they can get money to invest in mechanization. Then Zambia, that is the adjacent markets. I said DRC, Angola is another market. Right. Yes. But there is also a market for horticultural products in Zambia. I remember when I was young, uh, in the 19... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was born in Livingston <laughs> in the 1940s. Would have to count very far. <laughs> True. <laughs> okay. All vegetables used to come from Zimbabwe and from South Africa mm. by train via Bulwayo. I mean, which are the stories that we hear from our parents? True. Buttercup coming from there. You know, a lot of products coming Correct. from Zimbabwe. Correct. Today, Zambia is growing, is reasonably large in horticulture, mm. can become self-sufficient in horticulture. And in fact, Zambia is presently exporting vegetables to DRC. People in Kasumbalesa, people in Mukushi, they're growing. They're exporting to DRC. Mm. The potential for the growth in that area is also enormous. Furthermore, Zambia has still got sufficient land. It is blessed. It's really blessed. We have sufficient land to grow our agriculture. We have sufficient water. And the climate, we should be, able, we should be utilizing it to grow also export crops of high-value export crops mm. for export to overseas markets. Right. And that is happening gradually. We, we obviously have traditional crops like cotton and tobacco being exported. But now we have new crops like black carrots, stevia. People are looking at macadamia nuts, avocados. People are looking at new, new things now. Mm. Utilizing our God-given assets. Okay. All right. Right. So in terms of looking at the various um, uh, um, opportunities in agriculture, uh, aquaculture, um, um, we talk about agriculture itself, we talk about um, horticulture. Um, what is the future of Zambia's you know, agriculture industry going forward? Maybe say the next five, ten years. Uh, are we seeing that growth um, sort of manifesting even in the people themselves, even in the, the, the economy and becoming um, number one um, sort of supplier for many uh, foods in the region and like you said, overseas as well. And just being on top with many other countries out there that are doing so much in terms of exporting agricultural products. What is our future like? Just to look at our future, we can learn a bit from the past. Okay. And the past, in this case I'm referring to, is the past in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe used to be an agricultural powerhouse. It could feed, outside of South Africa, it could feed the sub-region. Mm. It was so productive. Zambia can be in, Zambia can be what Zimbabwe was. The crops that were being produced in Zimbabwe were exported and also used locally for agro-processing, for value addition both for local consumption as well as for export. In Zambia today, things are also happening. Agro-processing is increasing all the time. Uh, in 25 years ago, we had maybe 2 million companies in the whole country, probably controlled by government. Today, we've got <laughs> a multitude, a plethora of million companies right. all over Zambia. Mm -hmm. We've got Soya bean was non-existent 30 years ago. Today, soya bean is a major crop for Zambia. Gold. Yes. And soya bean is being exported as well as being processed within Zambia into oil. It is being made into soya chunks. These are consumer products. Soya flour. Yes, which are being sold all over Zambia, 
and are being exported out of Zambia. So that the future, when I say refer to the past in Zimbabwe, we have, we have, that is what Zimbabwe did, that their agro-processing and almost the entire economy grew on an agricultural base. Mm -hmm. Mining was one of the pillars, but agriculture was the pillar. And that is what Zambia has to aim for. We can move towards it. Government is going in the right direction by helping farmers to mechanize. Government should now provide ready, unfettered access to export markets. Zambian agriculture will grow, knowing that there is a ready market for what they produce. When you're exporting, you can grow things. It, it takes time to develop an export market. You can't say, today I've got maize and tomorrow you're going to buy it. It doesn't work like that. You've got a faith that I'll be, I'll be able to supply you consistently over a period right, of time. Yes. You have to have faith. So trust us to develop. It develops. It doesn't happen overnight. And that is what Zambia needs, a dependable export market development policy. All right. But what, what is your role as a, you know, a company in terms of your vision? What is your vision like um, in s complementing government's stance and, 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 and journey towards diversification? What is your vision like as a, as a company, as Saro um, Agro? See, as Saro, our, our vision is to see the economy grow. That is our vision. Our mission is to support that by supplying the, the most, the good, best quality farming equipment and industrial equipment for use by farmers. Mm -hmm. And our role, as I've said earlier on, is to identify the equipment that is required for uh, all the way from, far from uh, land preparation to planting, to harvesting, to crop processing. Wonderful. Equipment for the commercial farmers, emerging farmers, and small-scale farmers. And give them the backup necessary to achieve what they're trying to do. That's what we do. All right. What is your clientele base like? Are you only working with commercial farmers? Are you also supplying some, you know, equipment to small, medium um, farmers? I just told you. We yeah. Our, our client base uh, covers the entire spectrum of the farming community. Okay. It also covers people like government, people like water utilities, where we supply pumping equipment to all the utilities in the country. We're not the only suppliers, but we supply all of them. Non-governmental organizations who are in the country trying to help agriculture and other areas um, of poverty reduction. We work with those people. We also work with the mining companies. We supply them equipment that they need and which we deal in, things like electric motors, things like pumps. So our client base is as varied as our product range is. Solar equipment, solar is a huge, huge, huge future now. We, uh, we are growing with it. So we have institutions who are installing solar lighting, solar heating, this water geysers. It's an endless list. It's a diverse one. It okay. is a very diverse one, yes. All right. How many jobs have you um, created? As, as a company, are you speaking of all these um, clients that you're able to satisfy? How many people are behind that? Well, we try and satisfy. <laughs> I don't know if we <laughs> are able to satisfy. satisfy. <laughs> but to, able, to be able to satisfy them, we need the right human resource. Mm -hmm. And that is the single most important asset that this company has, Saro. We have over 300 people employed by us. I've told you in the branches, in manufacturing within Saro, in assembling within Saro, in field work, because we have equipment out there which needs to be serviced. Tractors don't come into the workshop for repairs like motor cars. Our people have to go out and repair them in the fields. So that our manpower, around 300 people, 
covers a, hu a very broad range of uh, provides a broad range of services to our customers. Okay. You buy a generator from us, we go and assess what capacity of generator you need. We'll go and install it and we'll commission it for you. Okay, wonderful. Right. As we wrap up quickly, in less than uh, a minute, uh, Mr. Oza, um, share with us some of the challenges and maybe a word of encouragement to the would-be farmers, small, small and medium farmers like myself, uh, the big commercial farmers out there. What is your message to them? Um, before that, just tell us maybe some of the challenges that you're facing in this industry. I think in, in this industry generally, it's lack of affordable finance. Okay. People want to grow, but they do not have access to finance. Our interest rates, as you know, are very, very high. No business can really can, uh, grow on those sorts of interest rates. There has to be some way of accessing long-term capital. Secondly, local businesses have to work with, as I've said, with this high interest rates. F investors coming from abroad have access to l less, more affordable interest rates. Zambian businesses need to be provided with incentives to allow them to grow, to enable them to grow, because we all want to control our own economies or contribute to the, our, our own economies as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Local business has to be supported by government with incentives. All right. All right. Thank you very much for coming through to the program. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you, Jilifia. Thanks for having me. All right, that was uh, Mr. Ashok Oza, Managing Director for Saro Agro Industrial Limited. He was gracing our show and uh, just explaining what role they're playing in the diversification journey that we as a country have embarked on in ensuring that we grow other industries away from mining. We want to get into agriculture and make sure that that becomes the hub of um, and uh, the, the, the pinnacle of uh, the Zambia's economy in growing that. And so you can do your small part, whether it's in aquaculture, horticulture, agriculture, whatever you're growing, that's something that can contribute. Even at household level, you can be somebody who's able to provide your own food in your own home. We'll see you next time on this same channel. Bye-bye.